Hello! Good morning, good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, on a Saturday, icy cold morning. We are here, we are live. Again, apologies for not being around yesterday, but obvious reasons, obvious reasons, which I put out on Twitter, is the day finally came. That boy held on as long as he possibly fucking could. He held on as long as he could, but the day came and decisions had to be made, unfortunately. It was uh, a dark day and Friday the 13th. Can you believe Ben died on Friday the 13th? There is no fucking way I'm forgetting that. <laughs> there, is, there is no way we are forgetting that that happened on Friday the 13th. The, the darkness finally fell. Yeah, it was uh, it was horrible. Spooked over. Yeah, I'm sorry too. But like, it wasn't as bad because we knew it was coming. Obviously, it's been on the uh, the agenda for quite some time. And in fact, we've been told Ben was only had a few days left for months. Literally months, right? You guys have been around. Like, literally months. We told he only had a few days left. But uh, I know people do want to know. And I don't want to weigh the stream down with this uh, at all in any way, shape, or form. But um, he... he uh, I think... Um, okay. Yeah. I think I'm... Wednesday, we took him to the vet again. He definitely slowed down. I did mention on the stream, he had slowed down. Something wasn't right. Uh, you could just tell he wasn't reacting as he usually would. He was still himself. He still wanted to go for walks. He's still getting up and eating and drinking, going to the bathroom, all that kind of stuff. But he had definitely slowed down. Uh, he, had, uh, he was sleeping a lot. He wasn't getting up as often as he would. He wasn't going to the door as much. He was still barking at delivery, guys. Classic. Uh, but then just going straight back to lying down. Um... But he was still able to do a lot of stuff. He was, like, coming upstairs. He was jumping on the bed. He was doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, Thursday night uh, at around 1 a.m., um, he was asleep on me and Emma. We had let him sleep on the bed because we suspected, you know, his days were numbered. Uh, like, actually numbered. Uh, so he was sleeping on the bed, and he had a massive seizure. Um, Emma grabbed me i woke up and he was having uh, a huge huge seizure on the bed and there was nothing we could do uh so i i just held him while this was happening and it was honestly one of the most uh horrifying uh experiences of my life uh he's it went on for about a minute a minute and a half uh and he just was completely seizing everywhere he was foaming at the mouth he lost control of his bladder uh, and he was just in my arms. I was just holding him and Emma was really panicking. She was like, what should we do? I was like, we just got to hold him and uh, let him get through it. It's not like, you know, we can do anything that will snap him out of it. So he was he was just having this enormous, enormous seizure. Um, as she was like, I'll call the vets. I was like, yeah, uh, call the vets. Uh, we woke the boys up because obviously we'd have to go to the vets. Uh, while this was still going on, like, you know, this was within about 60 seconds to 90 seconds. And uh, I just held him while it was happening. You know, he was he was on my legs. I was just holding him. Um, but it was it was really bad. It was really really bad. He was he was completely foaming up uh, and everything. And then it stopped, but he didn't move. And I thought he'd gone then. He was just he didn't move. He was just laying in my arms, and he was completely gone. Um, and I was like, <sighs> but then he was breathing. Uh, my biggest thought was that maybe he's gone brain dead uh, or something like that. Like, you know, he's completely fucked himself. Uh, but similar to most people who've had seizures or epilepsy or something like that, about a minute later, he completely snapped out of it. And he sat up. And he was just looking at me. And he was like, totally unaware of what had happened to him. Absolutely, completely unaware of what had gone on. He just sat up, totally fine, like, looking around something it, it, like something was wrong but he, he was he, he wasn't aware of what had happened to him at all uh so i got max to bring him a little bowl of water and we just put that in front of him and he started drinking uh he just started having a drink he was exhausted obviously uh but he was he was just like looking around why is everybody awake why is everybody looking at me uh why have i you know why have i got hold of him uh as he sat up and stuff uh and we made the decision then uh, even though he was still at his wherewithal, we we made the decision then. It's like, one, I never want my children to see what I just saw. Because <laughs> that would crush them. That would be very traumatic if the boys saw what I just saw and Emma just saw. 
I was like, I never want to see that. And also, if we've reached the point where his cancer's reached his brain, because that's one of the possibilities. We found that out on Wednesday from the vet. Uh, it's if we've reached the point where the cancer's reached his brain and it's now causing seizures, that are we going to hold him on until the point where he is brain dead? Uh, I have to, like, physically carry him to the vets, and he's just uh, he's just gone. That's not fair on him. It's not fair on my family. Uh, so we made the call then. The vet said, don't bring him in now, though. Like, they actually downplayed it a little bit. They're like, seizures aren't that bad. Uh, if he's come out of it, then, you know, and it's his first one. Yeah, he's going to have more. They said that. But uh, try and hold on till tomorrow morning and then see what happens rather than bring him in. I was like, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> i tell you what. He's an arsehole, that dog. He's an arsehole. So... <laughs> He got up and, like, jumped off the bed. Like, he had full control of his faculties, uh, and he knew where he was. And so he said, right, what we'll do is we sent the kids back to bed. <sighs> we sent the kids back to bed and then said, we'll sleep downstairs with him in case he has another seizure. That was our our thought, right? So it's like, I'll, we'll sleep downstairs. And so we grabbed the pillows and the quilt, the duvets. And Emma made him a nice big bed in the living room uh, to to lie on. And we moved downstairs. And so he, he, he couldn't settle on this big bed. Emma had made me like a giant comfy pillow bed. He was not interested in that. He just wanted to get on the couch. So I lay on the couch with him. And then Emma got on the couch as well. Uh, I swear to God, this fucking dog. Two minutes later, he, he's not settling, right? He gets up and he looks at Emma... He looks at me, and you can see in his brain, he's thinking, why the fuck are we downstairs? So the fucking dog goes back upstairs and gets on our bed. He's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Because he, uh, <laughs> he gets back up. He goes upstairs and gets back on our bed. <laughs> he's like, you guys are morons. There's a free bed upstairs. He's like, I don't know what the fuck is going on here, but I'm going upstairs. So I look at Emma and I'm going, I'm not sleeping down here while he sleeps on our bed. I'm not sleeping on a couch while he sleeps on our bed. And she's like, yeah, I fucking get it. And so <laughs> we, we went back upstairs, sorted the bed out, and then he started trolling. I swear to you, he plays a game that that dog has played since he's been probably six months old and could get on the bed, right? And his game is he's not allowed on our bed. He knows that. So when he does get on there, he goes what we call floppy, where essentially he's playing dead. So you can talk to him, and he's very responsive. You, you've seen him. He's very well trained, but uh, he's intentionally just pretending he can't hear you. And so you'd be like, Ben, get off the bed. And he just doesn't. He just lies like that. And he stares at you while he's doing it. But he, he completely go like, 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 you know, like playing dead like you would as a human, like completely floppy. And he starts playing that game with me. And Emma's in bed, and he's on my side, and he's like, I'm not going anywhere. And I'm like, Emma, I can't, like, play the game with him, because the game involves me physically, like, lifting him and, like, throwing him somewhere else. That's the game he wants to play. He wants to be thrown somewhere else in the bed. I was like, I can't do that. He's just had a fucking seizure. And she says, he wants to play. Uh, so, <laughs> I, like, scooped underneath him gently and started like edging him and, he, and then he starts doing what he usually does which is he goes Arr, Arr. not in any serious way this is the game right Arr, 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 Arr. Uh, and i'm like fuck off man and he's making me laugh he's like actually making me laugh because i'm like you've no you don't know what just happened to you and like you know we're gonna have to put you to sleep in a few hours but he still want to play so i managed to shift him down and i got in like a, a slightly uncomfortable position uh i got in Anyway, he slept through. He slept through till 6 a.m. when the boys got up. And then he went down and he sat with the boys. Um, and then we called the vet at 8 a.m., I think it was, just as we were about to stream. And I put out the tweet saying we're not streaming because I knew what we were doing that day. Um, and they said, right, 10.30, bring him in. Uh, and then we had to explain to the kids what was going to happen and why. But they've also had this conversation like five times now. My kids are surprisingly handle it very well. But they've also been told that we're going to have to put Ben down. Because the vets have told us that like several times at this point. Uh, so they're like, right. And then it was like this weird two and a half hours of waiting until we could go to the vets. 
so I was like, look, I can't sit here waiting for my dog to die. So I took him for a big walk, uh, which he really enjoyed. He was slow, but he enjoyed it. You know, did his usual faculties and stuff like that. Um, and then I went to the gym and I, I rotated with Emma. Emma went to the gym. I went to the gym uh, until 10 o'clock. And then it was time. Uh, we took it to the vets. Um, they totally agreed with our decision. Like, I fully understand. Yes, this is going to get worse. You can, we can give him medicines to like hold back the fits, but then he'll be on like nine types of medications just to keep him alive for a, she was like, you might get another month, but he's going to deteriorate like really badly. And he, he will have seizures and his, you know, something bad will come from that. Uh, but we can do that. For some people like to extend their lives as much as full as humanly possible, but I don't think that's fair to him and fair to anybody else uh, to have that happen. While he's, while he's still aware of us and he still knows what's going on, I think this is the best time. Uh, that was my thoughts on it. So she agreed. Uh, and then we had the conversation with the kids if they wanted to be in the room. Um, they were going to stay with us until the vet uh, said, look, this can go many, many different ways. This is, can go many, many different ways. He might just go peacefully. But also, there's things that can happen. He could defecate himself. He might start twitching. Uh, after their heart stops, they still sometimes take these, like, long, drawn-out breaths. And that's what happened with my dad. Like, I was in the room when my dad died. And they took him. Uh, we stopped the um, life support on my dad. My dad didn't fucking die. Life's <laughs> I have to give context to this. It is funny. Because it's exactly what my dad was like. <laughs> a fucking stubborn piece of shit. And I'll probably be the same. Uh, is they said to us, when we take life spot off, you should die within like five minutes. My dad didn't die for two hours. To the point where it got boring. Like, unequivocally, we were like, what the fuck is this? And the nurse kept coming to come back in. And she's like, I'm really sorry, but sometimes this happens. Like, it just won't die. <laughs> it just won't die. And every time we thought my dad was going to die, he'd be like that. And there you go. <sighs> but he was brain dead, so it's just his body keep, go keep keeping going. He just wouldn't fucking die. <laughs> and then eventually he did die. Uh, but... The kids were like, okay, I don't want to be here if that starts happening. It can be very distressing, very upsetting. So they, the vets were awesome. There was a receptionist lady, uh, this older lady, probably in her 50s, who was the designated I take care of the kids while this happens and the parents want to be in the room. And she was wonderful. She was so nice. She came in. She was like, hey, boys, we all understand what's happening. She's like, yeah. Uh, the boys are like, yeah, we get it. And they're like, okay, well, let's go back here and then we'll... Um, We'll, we'll have a chat and we'll talk about... Uh, we'll play a game if you want or watch some TV or something. She was really, really super nice. like uh, Almost like a, a kindergarten teacher or something. Um, so the boys went out. Um, and ben was lay on me. Like, he had his head on my knee. Emma sat, like, between my legs, so I was holding her. And I was rubbing his... I was rubbing his belly. And he knew where he was. And he was looking at us. And uh, Emma was rubbing his head. And she came in. And he was just looking around. Like, I, I could tell you, like, he honestly felt pretty lively. You know, in the room. And she said, this is the best time. Um, so she gave him the ejection. He died in about a minute. Perfectly quietly while we were holding him. And rubbing his tummy. And I knew he'd gone. And, um... That was it. He never made a fuss. No twitching, nothing. He just fell asleep and he was gone. Um, it was possibly the most perfect way it could have gone. Perfectly serene. Perfectly serene. Being hugged. Um, and being cuddled. And he went. And it was, it was fine. It was, it was about as perfect as it could have gone. Uh, and then, um, I didn't like him being on the floor. And he's also pretty heavy. And the nurse was Beck sized. She was like a fun sized nurse. Uh, so I was like, I'm going to put him on the table. Uh, so he's not just like lying on the floor. Uh, so I <laughs> was like, are you sure? Because <laughs> he's got to be really floppy. She's like, well, I'm used to him being floppy, right? He's done that to me many times. Big love, bud, less uh, so uh, I did. I picked him up, put him on the table. And I <laughs> put a, a sheet over him like a duvet. 
And I was like, what are you doing? She's like, it's just nicer. It is. Uh, and then she went out to see the boys. And the boys came in then. Because, you know, he had gone. And they wanted to say goodbye again. And all that kind of stuff. Uh, so they came in. Uh, and the boys gave him a hug. Loves and said goodbye. And, and all that kind of stuff. Mike. And uh, that was it. That was it, really. We just had to hold on until the, uh, the nurse said, you know, we'll take it from here. Uh, we didn't want to keep the ashes or anything like that. I'm not that, not that way. And so, uh, that's, that's it. But he went about as well as it could have gone. He was aware, he was happy, he was supported, and he was, you know, he wasn't, like, delirious. He wasn't in pain uh, or anything like that. And he, he went quietly, so... No issue. Overall, pretty good. Like, couldn't have, as horrible as it is, it couldn't have gone better for him, I don't think. Um, but yeah, I'm sad about it. He was my dog more than anyone else's. Friday the 13th, what are the odds? Yeah, Friday, I didn't realize it was Friday the 13th until afterwards. <laughs> until afterwards, I was like, shit, it's Friday the 13th? That's ironic. I called Emma about it. I was like, can you believe it's Friday the fucking 13th and he's gone? Uh, so, and she was like, no way, it is Friday the 13th. So, well, we'll definitely, we never knew, we never knew that dog's birthday. We always did it different things. I should say we cooked him a steak that morning for breakfast. Uh, Emma was like, we've got a steak. I'm going to make it in for his breakfast. It's his last meal. Uh, so we made him a massive steak. He was super excited for it. <laughs> he could smell the steak cooking on like really early a Friday morning. He was like, what the fuck is going on? And then it was all for him. And she was like, shall I take the fat off? I'm like, I don't think he's worried about getting fat. <laughs> of all the things I think our dog is worried about today, it's not putting on weight. I think it's fine. He'll have some fat. She's like, yeah, fair enough. Okay, well, we'll put the fat on for him. So he had a big juicy steak. Uh, everyone played with him that morning. Obviously, he was laid down because he was fucking wiped out and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, <laughs> like, uh, it's all good. But it was uh, it was a rough day. It was a rough, rough day for sure. But um, oh god, I'm snotty. See, this is why you can't talk on a camera. There we go. Ah. But that's it. That's the story. Uh, we don't want to drag it on. I don't want to encompass all my streams of it all the time. It's like, it is what it is. Um, we knew it was coming. Dealt with. Just, uh, I did stupid shit afterwards, though. You know, after I walked in from the vets, like, when we got in the car and came home. I uh, obviously got his lead and collar. <laughs> I walked into the house. And the first thing I wanted to do was fill his water bowl because it was empty. <laughs> So stupid. I like walked in, but it's an instinct, right? It's habitual for me. I walk it when I walk into the house and I walk through the kitchen, I check his bowls to make sure he's got water and stuff like that. And I looked in. I was like, his water bowl's empty. So I like leant down to pick up his water bowl to refill it. That yeah, that routine, that habit. And I was like, what am I doing? Fuck, man. I haven't moved any of his stuff yet. I'm gonna do it later. Emma didn't want to be in the house. Uh Emma didn't want to be in the house when we like move his stuff. So his food bowl and water bowl and his, his dog bed's still out. But I'm going to move that later on. Uh, so Emma's staying away tonight. She's uh, not because of Ben. Uh, but because she had plans. As we all did. Like we had told. We, you know this is what life is like isn't it? For all of us. Life doesn't give a shit. Uh, we were supposed to be on our purification mission in Terraria yesterday. We were going to play Lords of the Fallen yesterday afternoon. Emma's away today with Max. They're doing a horse show. So me and James are alone today. I've just... Uh, Move the console links. I've got a, a stream this morning, and we're streaming tomorrow morning as well uh, to get all caught up with you guys. So there it is. How old did he get? He was, I think, thirteen. Yeah, I think he was thirteen. He'd gone past his life expectancy. Um, yeah, I think he was thirteen. But honestly, that dog had the best life a dog could wish for. He travelled. He didn't get to travel internationally, but he saw all of the UK. He travelled on boats. He travelled the mountains. Uh, he had the best life and he was honestly the best dog I've ever had. I've had in my life, I think 12 dogs, uh, multiple dogs at one time or another, but about 12 dogs over my life. It was Emma's first dog. Emma's taking it very badly. Not only is she more of, um, a soft heart towards animals than I am, but, uh, it was Emma's first dog and she used to be a cat person. Uh, I'm joking. Uh, so I, you know, she... But she didn't realize... Emma said to me last night... Uh, she didn't realize until we got Ben... Just how... 
loving uh unconditionally loving and supportive and also aware dogs are not all dogs like there's always there's always bad apples or whatever and certain breeds are different but um she didn't realize until we got ben i mean that dog defended us from burglars like actually chased burglars off he defended emma in a field uh when she was out with a walk just after my first son was born and she'd gone for a walk because obviously she wanted to lose baby weight and i was working she wasn't uh, so she'd gone for a walk and the creep was in the uh park where she was there was somebody who was coming up to her and ben defended her uh and also ben's ben's had some horrific injuries in his life and one of them was when she was in a running club which allowed dogs to go with her. Uh, so the people used to bring their dogs. And somebody had a wild... You, you, some of you will be will have been around when this happened. Because Ben's throat was uh, sliced open. But a vicious dog attacked the runners. Like, some dogs don't like people running. And this vicious, vicious dog went to attack the runners. And it was Ben who, who dived in. Out of all the other dogs that were there that were scared, Ben dived in and attacked and fought off this dog. Ended up getting severely injured for it um but he was the one who did that and she called me that morning to say you won't believe what he did like as soon as he detected danger he went for it straight away as soon as he thought emma was in trouble he went straight for this other dog and defended her and then sat guard every night that dog literally was on fucking guard duty every night in our house he just sat next to the window listened for any noise would sprint downstairs annoyingly a lot of the time it's not like my house is under attack from zombies or something so 99.99% of it was annoying is he would just fucking start barking at something in the night. But on occasion, he did, you know, chase somebody away like once or twice in his lifetime over 13 years. So we had a, a billion false alarms, but that's what he was doing every night, defending. And he, you know, that dog, I know it sounds mean, but it was always in jest and lighthearted. He never liked it if the family split, if we were out. So let's say we're in a park and I want to take, say, Max, who was a bit older, through like a more wooded climbing area of a park. And Emma doesn't want to do that. <laughs> She's got our younger son. So she goes along the path. He would sprint backwards and forwards, endlessly sprint backwards and forwards to check, are you okay? All right, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? And he'd just sprint backwards and forwards, like nonstop, just checking to make sure everything's okay. Uh, and he doesn't like it. He wants us to be together. And at night, because he can't sleep on the bed, what he'd do is he'd sleep at the junction between all the bedrooms. So if you, I mean, some of you have been in my house, not, not many of you, uh, but he would sleep on the, the, in the junction between all three of the bedrooms to make sure he can see what's going on everywhere. Uh, and then he'd go downstairs and look on the stairs and stuff. Yeah, he was an amazing dog. He was amazing. He's the best dog I've ever had. Out of the 12, he was number one. Stay strong, Mike lost my boy about a year ago. It's very hard, but it gets better with time. I feel, honestly, I know I'm sad about reliving the moment, but like I said, Emma's taken it harder than I have. I've been prepared for his death now for a while. It sucks it when it finally happened, but I've, I've kind of adjusted to the idea that he was going for quite some time. So it didn't hit as, it wasn't sudden. I think that's the important thing. It wasn't sudden. Um, everything went well with it. It went at the right time. Like, it still sucks, obviously, and it fucking, it hurts. But, it wasn't so, it's not like you got hit by a car. It's not like something happened to him that was really brutal or nasty or anything like that. Like, that's not what happened. I kind of feel like I did with my dad, is I knew my dad was dying about a year before he died, because he was slowing down. It was noticeable. Uh, so when my dad actually passed, I wasn't surprised. And I think that's the word I'm looking for. I wasn't surprised. Yes, it hurts. Yes, it sucks. But I'm not surprised uh, by any means. I'm, I was ready. For, I was somewhat ready for it. I was more concerned at the time. I guess it's kind of a dad instinct as to how my boys were going to handle it. Um, whether it was going to be traumatic for them. Whether they were going to be like I was as a kid. But they've been surprisingly okay with it they uh max always shuts down when something horrible is happening and then he sort of cracks at night that did happen uh but the boys have been very supportive of each other they're very different kids uh yeah so it was it was one of those it was one of those but there he goes <clears throat> so it was my grad there i was prepared for years yeah you just kind of know it's coming and it still sucks on the actual day but at the same time it's like all right uh, this is it it's happening now and i and, and obviously we knew the night before because of the seizure once we'd reached the stage of seizures we were like okay uh, i actually said swimmer and uh, surprisingly 
I said to Emma when she was on the phone to the vets, and she's like, we're going to have to take him to the vets. I was like, Emma, you understand what we're going to do? And she went, yes. And I was really surprised by that, because Emma is, uh, Emma's had lots and lots of animals, rabbits, rats, whatever. Um, cats, all sorts of stuff. She'd had a ton of animals. Uh, her family were very um, animal-orientated for most of her childhood. Um, and she's always kind of been one to try and fight for that one more day. Um... In fact, it ended up being my decision to put her favorite rabbit down because that rabbit was absolutely screwed. But Emma asked me to take him in. She couldn't be there. Uh, she's like, I kind of know what's going to happen, but I don't want it to happen. And she, she knew herself if I was in that room I w and they said, oh, we can do this. Like, I have no doubt if Emma's, if, if that vet said, you know, for £20,000, we can extend Ben's life by a year, she would be tempted by that or something, despite the fact it would cripple us completely. Uh, but this time she wasn't. She was like, no, it's time. It's, uh, I think he's in pain because of his cancer and blah, blah, blah. All right. So there it is. Uh, I don't know about the question, but do you think you'll have another family pet? Not to replace. Uh, we talked about this yesterday, actually, uh, before Ben went. Because we had that, like, couple of two and a half hours before we took him. Um, and I, 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 I brought the subject up. I was like, I do not want... Just in case. I didn't think Emma would do this, but I felt it was important to have the conversation. Communication. <laughs> Always important in a marriage. I said, I don't want you thinking we should go and get another dog. And she went, no, absolutely not. I, I like, I don't think that's... The, it's a bad decision for a number of reasons, like, as, um, as a family. One, I travel a lot. You guys know that. I'm traveling, what, like four times in the next three months uh, to different countries. Uh, sometimes the kids are with me, sometimes they're not. Um, it's, it's, you know, being objective about it and pulling myself out of it. Having a family pet is an inconvenience in a lot of ways, especially with the way we, we our lifestyle is. Emma and the kids are, are, are out sometimes 15 hours a day. And that leaves just me. And I'm working all the time. So I do not have any time to dedicate to a puppy for sure. Like, a, Ben was an older dog when we really reached reach this stage of older kids and my travel mixing in as well. Uh, so it wasn't as bad. But we also we also had to pay, like, Emma's mum to come and be with Ben. Uh, because Ben was too old to go into kennels. We tried it once and he didn't like it. He was, it took, like, a month for him to come back out of his shell uh, after we did put him in a kennel. He was just too old for it by that point. Um, so, no. Uh, maybe when I want another dog when I'm in the right position for it, like a hundred percent. I love dogs so, so much. I would absolutely have another dog at some point in my life. Not in the near future though. Not in the near future. There's, there's no, it's not fair on the dog and it's not fair on my family to add that stuff in. So yeah, I will get another dog at some point in the future because I think we have a lot of love to give and we love dogs and we want to care for them and give them a good life, but not, not anytime soon. Not anytime soon. Yeah, there's a time in your life when it makes sense. Right now, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense uh, at all. It, it's it's not fair on either side to do that. Uh, let's talk about it four months before getting another one. I'm talking years, probably. Years. Maybe even when the boys move out. and uh, We'll see where my future goes uh, and Emma's. Um, so we'll, we'll see where it's going to go. But it, right now, it's just completely off the table and not a discussion. Uh, we, we talked about it yesterday. We both agree. Um... Now, you guys also know what my wife is like. So if in the next three months, Emma walks into this room with a little puppy she's just happened to find. Remember this day. <clears throat> remember this day in this conversation we just had. Remember this day. Because that's how Ben came into our lives. Uh, it was before I live streamed. I was just getting started in YouTube. Um, is Emma walked into my office upstairs when I used to have um, one of the bedrooms as an office with Ben five days old and she went look what i found and she put a red ribbon around him and i told her to if you don't know this <clears throat> ben was a rescue uh neighbors of emma uh had just let their dogs breed and had not cared for them in any way so when emma went over to their house to say hi because she was friends with their daughter she saw that there was four dead puppies uh, of the litter of about eight or nine five were kind of alive and some of them had started to eat the other dogs because they hadn't been fed uh the other puppies uh it was it was gruesome absolutely gruesome 
so Emma immediately ran back to her mother's uh, and got on the phone and called the RSPCA and said, look, I've just walked into this house. This is what's going on. Uh, you need to get somebody here now uh, to deal with this. Uh, and Emma went back and she said, look, I've reported you to the RSPCA. They're going to be here soon. Uh, the people didn't care. Like, I, I, I don't get it. It's not it's not how my brain works, but the the owners just didn't care. They didn't care uh, at all. They were like, yeah, well, somebody will take these dogs away. Whatever. Um, uh, so Emma saw Ben. <laughs> Emma saw Ben. I've got the picture somewhere, but I'm not going to search for it now. Uh, <clears throat> Emma saw Ben looking up at her, and he was the only one who was, like, looking at her with some awareness. So she grabbed Ben uh, and took him. She grabbed Ben and brought him to our house uh, and said, I found this dog. She explained the situation. But I also said to her, look, Emma, we can't have a dog right now. Hang on. What's up, son? The TV isn't letting it on. It's not letting Fortnite on. One moment, please. <sighs> the ban was lifted for good behavior on Fortnite. They did the laundry. They did the lot. As soon as we banned them from Fortnite, they really changed their attitudes towards stuff. Uh, <laughs> they really changed their attitudes. They uh, they did the laundry. They did all those stuff, uh, and then their dog died. So yeah, we lifted the ban uh, to let it work. Crazy how that works. Yeah, it's surprising. Uh, so I sent Eber away. I was like, we can't have a dog. Uh, we can't have a dog. And I went back to work and all that plagued my brain, and she knew it as well. She's a manipulative cow. She knew it as well. Is She was like, he's going to want the dog. He's going to want the dog. And it plagued my brain. Um, and I called her, I think, uh, an hour later. Uh, and I went, have you still got him? She went, yep. I didn't even take him back. I just went to my mum's and I'm playing with him now. And I'm like, motherfucker. I was like, all right, we can have the dog. And then I said, let's make a deal. The deal is I'm not being the one solely responsible for this dog. Okay? I'm not going to be the one who has to walk this dog twice a day. I'm not the one who's going to have to feed the dog, make sure his bowls are full, etc., etc., etc. And she agreed it would be a 50-50 split on the dog. And she would help entirely. She promised. She swore with all her heart. And I would estimate in the grand total of Ben's 13 years on this planet... That Emma has walked him sub 100 times. <laughs> sub 100 times. It 100% became... To be fair, I like going out and doing little walks more than Emma does. Uh, but yeah, it's probably sub 100 times. I have refilled his bowl. It was definitely a 99 to 1 ratio, for sure. It was a 99 to 1 ratio. If we were both in the house... It, I, I always said to Emma, it doesn't count if I'm literally in a different country... And you claim that you like walked the dog while I wasn't, while I was literally not in the country. Like that doesn't care. That doesn't count. If we're both available and it's only on me, that's when it counts. That's when it counts. Uh, so <clears throat> marriage, yeah. I mean, she knew it. I mean, I love dogs uh, intensely. I, I, I love, I love little puppies. Um, and then he cost me uh, every penny we had. I nearly went bankrupt on the first night because I had four hundred pounds in my account. Um. And uh, because of the living conditions he'd been born in, he was rife with uh, various illnesses. Uh, so we took him to the vets. And I think it cost us 500 pounds. I said to Emma, I was like, this literally makes us more than bankrupt to deal with this dog. Uh, and she went, do it. <laughs> and I agreed. I wasn't going to see this puppy die. Um... So we spent every penny. I went overdrawn on my bank account uh, to get him his medication. And also the, 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 the vet told us on that day that he would probably be dead by the morning because he was super malnourished. He wasn't eating. He wasn't doing anything. Um, I know I've told this story before, but just for context for some people who haven't heard it. And it's a good memory as well. 
Uh, so the first night we had him, so this would be been approximately five or six days old. It's a rough guess. Um, it's a rough guess. Maybe seven. Um, we made a fort in the living room. Uh, we made beds either side of him. Uh, and we had to, like, feed him with a syringe, right? We had to feed him with, like, a syringe. So we had to open his mouth and feed him with a syringe. Uh, and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, to try and get some nutrients in him because he was borderline dead. Motherfucker. We sat there with him. <clears throat> unmoving. Unwavering. Like a brick. Like, trying to get nutrients in him. Three hours into this. So it's probably looking at about 2 a.m. Something like that. That fucking dog stretched got up on its own walked to my kitchen had a full bowl of puppy food came back lay down absolute fucking arsehole absolute arsehole just got up walked into my kitchen started eating a full bowl of food and then walked back into the living room and just went ah this is all right. This is way better than what I've re previously been living in. This is way, way better. This is awesome. This food where I want to go. Uh, and that was my first night with that dog. He then proceeded to chew up my house. He destroyed the carpets. He destroyed all my uh, skirting boards, everything. Uh, which we didn't replace for 12 months because until he stopped teething. Uh, but he wrecked my house. He absolutely destroyed my house. Easiest dog in the world to uh, potty train, though. He was about to pee. I uh, I picked him up. I took him to the garden. I said, there. That was it. He was done. He knew exactly that he wasn't uh, supposed to pee inside. Job done. Job done. I think in his total life, that dog had like three accidents in the house. And it was always our fault. Or he was ill. Something like three or four uh, in the history of having that dog. He was either severely ill and couldn't control himself. Uh, or we had unfortunately been out of the house for just way too long like with things that we need to do uh by excitement literally living by me yeah 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 yeah. you mean ben's house well yeah that's the hardest thing is getting used to his lack of presence uh but either way so game plan for uh, let's move on from this um i think i've uh shared enough irl stuff uh with you for a while uh game plan for today is i want to check out